This is the Said No One Ever Podcast. A podcast about things you never knew you wanted to hear about. I'm Ian Bennett. And I'm Martin Moore. Let's get into it. My levels are good? Yeah, Test. Let's go, man. You're going to die. We always do really clickbait Gosh. episode titles to like, I hope, reel I hope people we don't in. Die. What, is the, uh, don't. what is the title? You're going to die. I hope we don't die. Gosh. <laughs> Again, you picked the old man topic for yeah, the old man. Yeah, I know. I feel bad now. Now I'm thinking of it. <laughs> that oh wasn't the reason. You've li- you <laughs> lived a really interesting life, so I think you're going to bring I have some had some an interesting life, and I don't want to end yeah. it anytime soon. Yes, I so agree. Let's... All right. Here we go. Here we go. Welcome to another episode of the Said No One Ever podcast. Bam. Ian. Bam. How, how was your weekend? In the building, man. The weekend was chill, man. Just coaching, taking off. No life. You got two daughters, you know. I got, how are the girls I, doing? Man, they're they're so mouthy. I love them to death, but they're, they're mouthy. And they, you know what? They always want money from me. Like, they don't, they say, hi, dad. Can I get 20? And then that's it. And then once, they don't do any chores. No, thank you. No, uh, sometimes, but it's like they're just butter me up, though. That's why it's not. I don't think it's genuine because you know? you're the pushover parent, right? I'm the good cop, yeah, and my and the wife is the bad cop. So yeah, it's it sucks being. Now I'm thinking it sucks being the good cop because they always come to you. Sure, yeah. sure. You know what, what? What's been going on with you, man? So I had a pretty interesting weekend. We Ooh. ripped out our driveway, our patio, our what? sidewalk. Yeah, so our it yard was hot, is hot, dude. Our yard is pretty fucked up. <laughs> it was. Why are you doing work? Out I there? also I also watched this interesting YouTube video called uh, "A Time Lapse of the Future: A Journey to oh the End of God. Time." You always watching boring. I know stuff, I watch man. weird stuff. God, this was like a 25, 30 minute video of of basically showing how the universe, how scientists think the universe might end. And it started <laughs> off with like Earth in twenty twenty, and it showed like the oceans rising and the polar caps melting, Sweet. and then Sweet. it showed like the sun expanding in the year I don't know what it was eight hundred fifty billion trillion trillion years from now, See? gobbling up Mars and Earth and all this, and then it showed all the stars exploding, and then it showed like black holes, and then all different of a sudden there was dude. just like You're a different nothing. Dude. Nothing left. <laughs> Time was meaningless, and it was depressing. And I was yeah, like... why are you watching that what, stuff? What is the point of life, then, if it's all going to end? And oh, so, gosh. that's that's today's episode. Yeah, You're I'm going excited. to die. Oh, gosh. We Hopefully have a great not. guest. Uh, he really is good. the former mayor of Oak Creek, what? host of the Steve Scafidi Show on 6W20TMJ. Jeez. A good friend of mine. Steve Scafidi. Welcome to the show. Steve. Oh my God, this is fun. Martin used to be on my show and I now I'm doing his podcast. <laughs> right? You guys both have a great look, by the way. Martin, you're in great shape. I'll oh, even working you. out. Thank you. You're always in shape. Ian's always in good shape. <laughs> I have to be. My hat's good. The black. Is it all black with you all the time? Sometimes. I don't. Know, I'm, 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 actually, I'd like to brighten it up, but I haven't been dressing up lately. Yeah. So. Now, let me ask this. Sure, sure. I'm not going to take over the show. No, take, get, over. Take, over. take it over. <laughs> take it over. Take it over. Take it over. You have the old man topics because I'm the oldest guy in the room. No! Is that what's going on here? Because I feel that. Martin, the reason The reason we wanted to have you on the show, and I'll let you. Why don't you tell the listeners really quick kind of who you are, a little quick bio about your history and where. What you're doing and All where right, you One came minute, from. set the clock. I was born in England. My mom is from England, grew up in Oxford, England. Get My dad was in the Air Force. Absolutely. That's awesome. No accent because I was only there for like less than a year. Came okay. to the States, beautiful Cudahy, Wisconsin. You know where that is. Oh, yeah. Lake. Yep. My dad was a weatherman. My mom was a homemaker what? at the time. I think that's what they called it, housewife, whatever. Yeah. Um, three brothers. We fought all the time. We are horrible kids. We <laughs> somehow managed to get through school. I went to UWM. I got a degree in broadcast journalism. Never used it until the end of the story, which I'll get to. I ended up working in television research for 20-some years. Oh, wow. Fantastic. I left that career. I became mayor. We had a mass shooting, which was not a good thing, and maybe we'll touch on that. Maybe that we won't. True. And then at some point, somebody from WTMJ said, you know what, you ever think <laughs> about doing radio? And I said, not really, haven't really thought about it. And yet, here I am, four and a half years later, doing you, radio. You got a great radio voice that is that like is you have a great story. voice thank man. you for that he, he does i'm is i'm attracted to his voice <laughs> steve like, i can say that right one of the Let's first things him. i uh <laughs> one of the first things i Love i it. realized Love about it. steve when i met him uh and i listened to his radio show i was like boy i just want a voice like that i know I a and i don't like see that. that at all because i i have to listen to a lot of the stuff that i do right yeah. I, you know i record promos and oh, i nice. i hate my voice really which is not an uncommon reaction from anybody who works in broadcast. i hate my i like my voice he's right i hate my voice you like your voice wow i i do only because i think i'm so used to it and i've watched the what does this tell us about martin i think it tells us i'm pretentious and i'm uh gosh so this episode oh, is called man. You're Going to Die, and, and it's m- going to be more of a conversation about Literally, I'm gonna life die. really <laughs> than death. Oh, right. Uh, 
so I want to kind of get into, you know, what is the point of life, uh, the afterlife? Is there a God? Is there not a God? Or what, do, what do both of those things mean? What does it mean to retire? Uh, what happens to our digital lives when we, when, we, when we die? We have all these pictures on Facebook and these tweets and these YouTube videos, this podcast, your radio show. I mean, that's all yeah. there. What happens to all that stuff? Um, you know, what are some of the things we've learned in life? Uh, and what does it mean to, you know, sort of document our lives and contribute to the whole human experience? So That's a, a lot, big question. I know. A lot, a lot, like, a lot to get into. Oh, so let's, like, man, how much gonna, time do I yes, have? A lot to get into. So let's start, with, let's start with something simple, something easy, something we can, you know, 10 seconds takes us to, to, to answer. Steve, to you, what is the point of life? Experiences, <laughs> right? Ooh, okay. Because none of us know. Like you could be a person of faith. Mm. You still don't know. You, you, you trust your faith. You hope that that's the case. But sure. if you look at religion and faith in the world, not everybody can be right about all this stuff. There's multiple faiths and different yep. entities you can be part of. So living the moment, experiencing as much as you can, carpe diem, seize the day, seize the moment, love that. live it, love your life. That's my message. That's I, I like that's that. Spot on, man. That that's why I love experiences. I'm yeah. gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna sticker. travel. I'm yes. going to meet people. I'm gonna do things that I've never done before. That's life. Sure. Dang, that I, I like Ian. that. I like that answer because I, you know, what I mean, like this follow, stuff. Fo- can you follow that no, up? No, and- because this death stuff, man. I don't like going there, man. I'm gonna be mm. honest. Well, yeah, who does? We're going right. to, but I don't really think. You know what I mean? I try to keep it positive. Yeah, I'm gonna die, but I'm gonna just wait that out. Put down the back burner for a little bit. But I love that answer. I think it's all about experiences. I, you know me, I love life. I'm a positive dude. Um, I try to take the positive of anything, and I like to have a good time anywhere I'm at. So even if it's boring, you know me, I'm the life of the party, man. Yeah, you are. I'm going to have fun if we're drinking, if we're hanging out, whatever we're doing, I'm, I'm there. So I don't think I don't think I'm really too much into the um, the death part right now. <laughs> the, so. the key word you said there was positive. Yes. yes. I mean, you can look at things in a lot of different ways, right? I choose the positive mm-hmm. because it makes life more fun, yes. more interesting, more dynamic. I'm always choosing the positive. Doesn't mean we're not going to talk about negative yeah, things. Oh, right? 100%, yeah, hundred percent. You got to no. embrace the bad too, yep. but make something out of it. I, I'm a, not a big fan of guys who do what I do or women who do what I do that strictly complain. Yep. Show me something. Yes. Give me something. What's your action plan? How are you going to make it better? I love that. I, yep. And you know that kind of touches on you know what what I think the, the point of life is. And for me, it, it's to participate in the progression and the success and the in the future of uh, the human race and, and and to you know like you said putting positive energy out there uh, being a positive person um yeah you can touch on negative stuff but uh, but for me it's it's making a small dent in, in the in this life that i have in making sure that the next generation the next generation of people and the earth and stuff is is better off because i lived in it than yeah not we all meet people every day yep and you can actually influence and shape that relationship you can go the wrong way, which is to be mean to that person or to just ignore them. Sure. Or you can interact with them, learn something, experience something with them, share it. Just it's that's part of what makes me tick. That's why I've retired three times already. <laughs> you know, it's like I like retiring and then doing something else. And this for me has been the greatest job on the planet as a radio host. Yeah. Because I have really the ability to talk about whatever I want, just like your podcast. You can yeah. talk about what you want to talk about. Sure. sure. Let's you know, let's get into that. Let's get into retirement. Uh, you know, the, in my opinion, like what I do for a living, shooting photos and videos, uh, that's fun and it's, it's, not, it's not a job. But ultimately, I don't want to work for the rest of my life in retirement to something that I do look forward to. I don't think human beings are designed or, or built to just work for 50 or 60 years and then spend, you know, a decade or two going on cruise ships and, and, and eating steaks uh, and, and then just pass away. So, so for you... What is what does retirement mean to you, or what, what did it mean to you, or what did you think it meant? It's a pause until the next thing. Uh-huh. Mm. The people I think that get in trouble is they think it's the end. Sure. If it's the end of something, it's, well, live live the definition. It's the end. I don't want it to be the end. So retirement is a pause till my next thing. So when I stop doing this, I'll be doing something else. I, I have a lot of ideas about helping seniors, fellow seniors do things in their yards because I love landscaping. Yeah, sure. I'm always going to find some different venue to go forward because going backward is not anything I'm interested in. Right. So, Ian, for you, because you're an athlete and, yeah. you, you know, we've talked about this on the Dream Jobs episode yeah. and you have such a, a finite amount of time to, to kind of live your dream job. For you, do you ever think about, like, retirement? And, no, like, that's what, what I'm saying. Whatever you do, if it's – I don't consider it a job. It's my passion. I love it. I could do this, honestly – if God could, but I would play till I'm 80. Okay, like that's what I'm saying. Like I don't think it's a job. I don't want to retire. I'm gonna have to retire because 
what, I'm old, I might get an injury, God forbid, but that's, I don't want to retire. I think if you talk to any athlete that really, truly loves the sport, I mean, maybe they get burnt out, whatever, but for me, I could play this game. Like, if there could be robots, please give me some <laughs> robotic legs. I would play until I'm seriously 80. So, like, I retire, I don't really want to retire unless, you know what I mean, if, if it's something that I'm passionate about and I love doing it, I really don't want to retire. I think it keeps you alive. Doing something keeps you alive. If I'm sitting... Day retired on the beach. That's cool, but it's gonna get old for me, right? Yeah. I mean, I can't work on this tan so much, right? I, I'm only, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can't keep working on this tan, but like, I just feel like I'm here. You're gonna die. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna live the best out of it, right? I'm gonna every moment. I'm gonna take some vacation, but I'm gonna work. I'm gonna do stuff. I'm gonna get in. The, I'm gonna get dirty, man. I'm gonna get in the field. You know, mm-hmm. attitude's a big part of this. You have yeah. to have a positive attitude. Yes. I think that's something that I always try to reinforce with my kids. I have two daughters that are now grown up. Yes, you with have two my daughters. Yes. Oh, oh we gotta talk about that. <laughs> well, you know what that's Jeez. like, right? And to your point earlier, oh when we were just ch- uh, chatting off Mike, yeah. that never changes. No, I know. Stuff. It oh, just goes. Tell. My daughter's in her 30s. It never changes. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> See, hey, talking to him for just five minutes, it's amazing that you were a mayor. How, how long were you a mayor for? Five years. Five Unbelievable, years. because that's a serious gig, man. It's, that is it a changed my life. And obviously, I, I mentioned to you guys, and, and, and yeah. Martin knows the story. And you've been through I had a mass shooting three yes. months into my, in my mm-hmm. first term. <laughs> yeah. It blew me away. That was the it's, Sikh Temple shooting? Sikh Temple yeah, shooting in 2012, I August 5th, 2012. Right. I, I was actually at a wedding with my Sikh friends uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, here we are nine years later. Mm. Yeah, Lives changed, lives affected. I've, I've told the story a million times in speeches that I've given. If that shooting doesn't happen, here's the weirdness of life. Yeah, I'm not doing what I do now. I'm not on the radio. Because that event got me noticed by people who heard me talking about that event That's in speeches, on television, on radio. And they said, you know what? He's actually a pretty good communicator. Maybe he could do this. So time, in yeah. the midst of that, again, talking about pushing it positive, yeah. in the midst of all that negativity, and that's just one element of that. There's other people in the temple who also feel the same way. Their lives have been changed yeah. to the positive because of that day. That sure. was a tough time. And that's, it that's, was horrible. That's, wow. what you, you know, that's what you want wow. to come out of uh, situations like that, instances like that. You, you don't want it to, to set you backwards. Um, something horrific like that happening when when you can find something positive or do something positive with that it it makes it not all for nothing you know and so that, that, that's great to to hear i mean the toughest part for me is every year that day comes up august yep. 5th it's always going to be a, a something that i remember because i can remember that day like it was yesterday yeah, you know sure. the phone calls from the police chief fire chief from the president of the united states from a Jeez. mayor who did not know me mm. steve hogan who has now passed away mayor of aurora, aurora colorado who had a mass shooting two weeks prior, and took it on his own initiative, again, pushing it forward, called me on my cell phone, got my number somehow, and said, how can I help you? I didn't know this guy. Wow. Wow. And he had just suffered the worst tragedy you could even imagine. You know, dozens of people killed in a theater. And he's looking out for me. And I've told that story a million times. It's it's the essence of helping somebody else in their toughest time. That's that's an important message. Doing something beyond your comfort zone. Yes. He didn't have to do that, but he did it, and that's the cool thing about it. That's why I love human beings. Oak Creek, man. That's why I love human beings. You so, represent Oak Creek. I still man. live in Oak Creek. I oh, love that city. I love it. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> so you guys both, you, you have kids. And, I mean, oh, this is not yes. beholden to just <laughs> anyone that has kids. You don't have kids. Oh, oh, you know, be nice, right? when you talk <laughs> about death, one of the things that I think about is everything I'll miss out on. This is going to sound stupid, but, you know, <laughs> like, I, I'm never going to live to see the a million people on Mars. I'm never going to see the iPhone 25. I'm never going to see, um, you know, but. my, my nieces, whatever their great, great grandkids. Do you ever, do you ever think about the things you'll miss out on? Of course. S- things that your kids will do that you won't be around for. But you've seen these shows. You've seen these ideas that are out there. Could you take your digital identity mm. and protect it and push it out? I don't know, 10,000 years from now. Could sure. you do that? Like it's the, not your physical body, but it's your it's your presence. It's your technology yes. that's in your brain, like wired a, by your brain, like but now using computers, yeah. like the Matrix. So that's actually interesting, Ian. Okay. So, so you, you know how we were talking about yeah. um, the universe ending? Uh, so yeah. in that video, one of the things they were talking oh, about is if what if human beings oh, get to the gosh. point where we we can live in a simulation, like you said, yes. and it doesn't matter. You don't need any sort of – you could be on a space station and we could all be in some <laughs> oh, computer. Would gosh. you – well, how about that? the technology we have now? DNA technology. Right. Could you take the essence of somebody, a, a, a syringe of blood, yeah. Yeah. And a swab, and then 
10,000 or, or more years from now, you bring, bring that person back because well, the technology now exists. There's people that uh, pay millions of dollars to freeze themselves, yes. freeze their brains. But you guys don't think in heaven, there you don't know there's not a heaven iPhone? Let's, you never know. You let's never get know, into man. It's a good point. You never know, man. So heaven, guys, God, don't don't limit. religion. Don't limit. You never I'm not know. Limiting. You never know. Do you guys, you believe in God? Yes, I'm a, I'm a spiritual dude, man. I went to Catholic school my whole life. It's sure. kind of crazy. I went to grade school, Catholic. I went to high school, Catholic. And guess what? College, unbelievable, Catholic. <laughs> wow. Crazy, dude. That's consistency. That's right. R- I was like, I just did the grade school thing. Oh, okay. 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 And, I, and I've said this. I'm a person of faith, but I've kind of shed the labels. Yes, sure. me too. Because me too. I'm, one of the, so I say I'm spiritual. Yeah, yes. I like that. So yeah. I believe in God. Mm-hmm. Yep. I believe in something out there that's yep. directed all of this. And I think that's, that, you know, the reason I do that is because I think that that maintains your presence that this is something I should be doing and not, and of the opposite, not doing, right? Mm. Yep. It gives you some sort of a moral compass. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And that's what guides me.